Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 perfumes to wear to go to sleep. Which is not as simple as to say the top 10 perfumes to wear to go to bed. Because when we say to go to bed, you could imply a lot of different things that you could do in bed. Mm, and they're all great things <laughs> you can do in bed, but I just want to focus on the perfumes, the top 10 perfumes that I wear when I just want to slowly drift into sleep. The, the relaxing, calming ones, sometimes not calming, but sometimes I don't need the calm, calm smelling perfume to lull me to sleep. It's an interesting psychological pattern for sure, but this is my top 10 perfumes to wear when you want to go to sleep. But first, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also uh, join me on Patreon, Super Day Cabal spelled together on Patreon for extra perks. And um, you can also follow me on my main Super Day Cabal channel. That's coincidentally also where I live stream every uh, week. And uh, I'm live streaming this video right now. So there's my co-chatters in the chats live co-chatting with me. Hi, guys. <laughs> We're going to get through uh, to the top 10 right away, and I'm going to be reading your chats as we go along. So for, for those of you who are watching me live right now, it's a great guessing game to play as we're going live through these perfumes. Obviously, if you're watching this video after it's been released, you could just fast forward or rewind wherever you want to. There's a little bit of the mystery is gone. So it's always a lot more fun to watch these live. And of course, I would love to know in the comment section down below, but also in the chats right now, um, what would be your favorite perfumes to go to sleep? So the first one is obviously, I had to put it in there because, I mean, as the first one, because y y you know it's going to be there. And, uh, and that's number five, you know, because from the moment Marilyn Monroe said all she wears to bed is a drop of Chanel number no. five. Um, she's, oh, look how it reflects the light, like a ray of light, like a sunshine. This is the pure perfume, and I'm talking about the pure perfume. I only wear to bed the pure perfume. Um, this is the spray bottle. It's a 7.5 mil rechargeable you know, you get the 7.5 mil vials of the Parfum. It says Parfum right down there. It's really hard to see, though. But, man, oh, man, the love of my life. Chanel number no. 5, what can I tell you? This thing is majestic. Um, so, obviously, if I wear Chanel number no. 5 to bed, oh, there's a little droplet on the nozzle. Hmm. This just, it's a sophisticated sleep. It, it it relaxes me, tells me everything is going to be okay. You can, you know, the world is your oyster. Chanel number no. 5 is just a majestic, the pure perfume, extra, is, it relaxes, Marilyn also wore the extra to bed. It relaxes you the right way. It, it makes you feel good and fulfilled and rounded up and abstract at the same time. It makes you blend into the world of dreams in such a good way. Something that people don't talk about when they review Chanel Number no. 5, the extra. Also because most people don't review the extra. Most people are going to review the de Parfum. Some people are going to review the de Toilette or Lo or Au Premier. But the extra is where it's at. And... Nobody really ever talks about how the extra guides you into sleep and the abstraction of that perfume is coincidentally very... The abstraction of the structure of this Art Deco perfume is very much in tune with the world of dreams. Um, not... By that, I don't mean dreaming about a better life, becoming a movie star. No, I'm talking about really falling asleep and dreaming. Uh, it's it's almost like a surrealist painting uh, wearing this perfume and falling asleep. You, you go on that surrealist uh, dream with Chanel number no. 5. Extra. Amazing. The second one is... Um, interesting and it's a it's it's actually based off of a night 
blooming uh, flower. And uh, so coincidentally, that flower blooms like for just a couple of hours, one night, every blue moon. And it is the base of this perfume, which also has a bottle uh, in, in a dark, dark night blue hue. And uh, it's a sweet yar flower, vanilla, but also the queen of the night, the cactus, the blooming queen of the night. There it is. Dior's Addict in its Eau de Parfum concentration. This is such a beautiful, beautiful fragrance to wear at night. Dior's Addict. Um, to fall asleep with this is to be guaranteed a comfortable, comfortable sleep. For me, I'm just, I can just talk to myself and for myself, obviously, everything I say in this video is just my opinion for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in any truths or facts, you know, it's, everything's alleged. Addict is, um, oh, my nose is itchy. Addict is a lullaby. It's a soft, soft tiar flower vanilla lullaby. It lulls you to sleep. It relaxes me. It calms me. Uh, it's a beauty. It's it's a beauty of a perfume to to fall asleep. It's like a pajama. Like your addict is like wearing a pajama and and a cozy, fluffy, cuddly pajama and just like letting yourself go. Beautiful perfume to fall asleep in. The next one also plays on the concept of the name of the perfume, the name of the perfume being connected to the night, but um, also uh, the name of the perfume being um, connected to dreams, even though it's referencing a book, and I've reviewed this perfume in all the details, and you can see the review of the perfume. And you can get to know about the book uh, that it's inspired by, but it's Voldenoui, Voldenoui by Guerlain. I have here the Eau de Toilette concentration, but, and obviously it's about a night flight. It's not necessarily about comfort, and these were dangerous night flights, as the book describes. And these pilots might just disappear in the middle of the night and the planes might, you know, crash and they're transporting posts and important messages and information. So this is not necessarily a perfume about cuddly sleep in an airplane overnight while you're flying from one continent to the other in terms of what the book of Old Nuit is about. But in terms of how the perfume smells... Voldenoui is a very, very majestic, sophisticated, grounded, powdery with a hint of vanilla. There's a little bit of Shalimar in there, kind of, in its own special way. Um, it's, it's a special perfume. And when I wear this to bed to go to sleep, this is one of my favorites to wear while I'm reading a book. Uh, coincidentally, it's inspired by a book, but it's also a great perfume to wear while you're reading a book to fall asleep. So I would usually spray a little bit of Old Nuit before I start reading a book as I'm in bed and I'm kind of oozing away, you know, just about to, oozing, do, dozing away, and I'm just about to kind of disappear. The book inspires my dreams. The perfume adds to the book I'm reading, no matter what book I'm reading. And them two combined with me just letting go of uh, consciousness, becoming more unconscious, right? And it's it's a beautiful way to to lull you to sleep. Reading a book, wearing this, and falling asleep. Voldenoui by Guerlain. This is the Eau de Toilette concentration. Great for falling asleep, for me. Now the next one. A new rediscovery of mine uh, in terms of uh, this concentration. I hated it for most years, but they've reformulated it now. And now it suits me to a T. So soothing, relaxing. 
sharp but slightly sweet mm. Sycamore by Chanel, the Eau de Parfum. But truth be told, also the Extrait, the Parfum, both of them are so relaxing to go to bed. Current formula, I have the batch code 7901. There's a softness to this that is just so relaxing, soothing, inviting. And inviting is the key word why this one is so good to fall asleep to. It almost invites you to sleep um, as if it were cradling you and telling you it's all going to be okay. You're in a safe place. You can let go and go to sleep. It's that beautiful and it's that soft and it has a slight delicate sweetness to it that just allows you to let go. The sweetness that uh, the eau de toilette doesn't really have because it's more wet and edgy. Uh, this one is there's a sprinkle of sweetness that that makes this thing a dreamscape. Now, as we know, Sycamore is also connected to Twin Peaks and David Lynch and the Land of Dreams and the Red Room and the Black Lodge. Underneath the sycamore trees is where we meet our uh, dweller on the threshold. So in a way, wearing this as I'm falling asleep, it's almost as if I'm encountering my, as I wear this while I'm falling asleep, it's as if I'm encountering myself from a dream. And I'm kind of accessing this extra realm where uh, there's another Jacob, <laughs> you know, waiting for me to to guide me through through this dreamy landscape. It's amazing. The next one is particularly fascinating when I have had a bumpy day. And I need uh, the feeling of a tabula rasa as I'm going to bed. Like I need to just feel as if the entire forest is burned down and there's that smell of the bark, but also of the, of all the resins in the trees that have been heated up. And there's kind of this emptiness now and new life can come out from that. Uh, it's um, it's Au Noir by Christian Dior, both the green version and the current yellow version. This is a very calming perfume. It has like three different, well, so they say on the website that it has three different essences of lavender in here. So lavender does have soothing and calming properties to begin with. And... Um, Oh, this thing, especially when you spray it on your skin, it gives you that burnt woods depth and deepness. And then there's the licorice in there, the lavender, the the fennel, um, the immortel. It, it, it goes there and it's so beautiful. It doesn't last long. I got to say, the, it's, it's not a power beast as it used to be, but it's just powerful enough for falling asleep because you, you, you smell it. It's kind of like a resinacy, lavendery, burnt woods scenario as you're, as you're drift, drifting away into dreamland. It's a beautiful perfume to fall asleep to. Um, it clears the path for you to walk through the land of dreams. Beautiful, au noir. And they're coming out with all the sizes of this one. I'm so excited. Finally, I can get one to travel with. They're going to come out with a 40 mil single bottle 125 and 250 mil so thank you francis courjan and dior for bringing back this beauty even though you changed its color and you've tweaked the formula a little bit now the next one is particularly good and important when i am kind of feeling like i'm in another time and i'm feeling nostalgic of the good old days in some way, shape, or form, or I am feeling um, the need of a time 
before technology was so advanced, like before social media, before internet, but with vibrant energy in the air. And if I just want to let go of all the noise surrounding me, and I just want to kind of reminisce of the 80s, I go, I go here. I wear Lulu to go to sleep. And Lulu to go to sleep is a majestic perfume because again, we have the TR flower, got the vanilla, we got the powdery, powdery notes of the vanilla. We got the tuberose. It's a soothing, relaxing, powdery dream of a fragrance. Again, the blue is kind of reminiscent of night, but then there's a dark red. And we have another night blooming flower here. Um, this one is soft, delicate, soothing, comforting. Uh, it's like an embrace. It's it's a it's a beautifully beautifully comfortable perfume to fall asleep with. It, this one is also it. Uh, this one also feels like wearing cozy PJs. Like, you know, like pajama party, and then after the pajama party with your friends, you go to sleep, and no need to check your social media before going to sleep. This one kind of allows you to de to detach from that, and you know, takes you back to a more peaceful time so it's a beauty to fall asleep to the next one you might be surprised but even the brand that made it actually developed a uh, formulation of this next perfume made specifically to go to bed and they made it so that you can as they say in their advertisement you can spray it on your bed sheets before you go to bed, on yourself as well. Now, I'm about to show you not that formulation. I'm about to show you my favorite formulation of it that relaxes me the most. But since it's very expensive, um, I don't think they advertise it as something to spray on your bed sheets. But anyway, it's the concentration that relaxes me the most. And that would be Chanel again with uh, Coco Mademoiselle. This is the pure perfume. Also in a spray form and it's 7.5 mil um, spray container. Now, so this is the parfum of Coco Mademoiselle. It is divine, so relaxing and soothing. It's a beauty. It's such a beauty to fall asleep to. Now, however, you know, Chanel has developed Coco Mademoiselle L'eau Privé, like private water blend, which they advertise as a perfume to spray on your bed sheets right before going to bed. It's like a sleep fragrance, right? So even Chanel recognizes the relaxing power of Coco Mademoiselle because they dedicated an entire formulation to it. Now, I do own a full bottle of L'eau Privé, but for me, if I'm going to sleep and I need a very precise accent of Coco Mademoiselle, I will go for the perfume because it's very sharp and focused. The pure perfume of Coco Mademoiselle is... Um, It's so well blended and masterfully blended that it cuts straight through. You know, it's not fuzzy or blurry. Lo Privé is a little bit blurry and fuzzy. It's maybe the, the smell you want to feel as you're drifting off to sleep. But this one makes me focus more because I'm the type of person, there's always a lot running through my head. And it's really hard for me to detach from my thoughts and finally drift to sleep. So... A perfume like this helps me focus more. And the pure perfume of all of the concentrations of Coco Mademoiselle is the one that is, because it's so precisely formulated, so masterfully blended, it has a sharpness to it. By sharp, I don't mean it's spicy. By sharp, I mean it's very crystalline. It's like cut like a diamond. And so it helps you focus. It helps you crystallize your thoughts. And it helps you focus instead of being all over the place with a thousand different thoughts in your head. This one helps me focus, clear my mind, and fall asleep. Coco Mademoiselle Parfum. The next one is, as I said at the beginning of my video, there's also going to be perfumes that are not necessarily um, 
meant to relax me in any given way, but are there to remind me of how beautiful complications in life can be. <laughs> I know this sounds a little bit like, wait a minute, it's like you're literally torturing yourself before you're going to bed. Why would you want to do that to yourself before you go to sleep? Well, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like if I remind myself of imperfections, then it's easier for me to accept them in myself as well and for myself. And so one of the biggest examples of this type of fragrance, which I adore and I've been wearing it uh, lately quite a bit uh, to go to bed, to go to sleep and different uh, formulations, but I just got this one new. So this is the current one I'm enjoying a lot. Uh, that would be Joy by Jean Patou. Unfortunately discontinued, but I hunted down, well, I didn't even know it existed really, this collector's edition bottle, which is a recall to the, you know, OG 30s, one of the 30s bottles of Joy or 70s bottles of Joy. Um, and uh, why I say this one is a bit complicated, because it's quite indolic in the way that it develops on the skin. So you get those complicated, difficult smells to digest. It's not an easy one. Uh, on my skin, it can go poopy. Uh, not always. This particular collector's edition is softer than the standard uh, joy that I have. So this one is just beyond amazing. Oh my God, I love it. Love it so much. Let me spray it in the back of my head. No. Just to give me a bit of a mood. <laughs> Mm. It's, it's like a wet dream, not in a sexual context, but it's like a moist, humid, drifting asleep while you're at the ocean type of vibe. This is what it gives me, barnacles <laughs> in the best of ways. Slightly salty. I mean, it's a pure jasmine. It's very indolic. It's a Yasminum grandiflorum. It's not a sandbag jasmine, so it's a more aggressive indolic jasmine. But it um, it relaxes me strangely, very, very much. Uh, the acidic, aggressive tone of this one is very soothing to me. Because it's so complicated, it smells imperfect. It always, I'm always sniffing on it thinking, oh, is it going to become more tame? Instead, it doesn't. The more time passes and the more indolic it becomes. So it's not perfect for the way that I want to perceive a perfume, right? But because of that, it's perfect. Because that imperfection keeps me guessing. And uh, it really helps me acknowledge the fact that it's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to not abide by expectations. It's okay to subvert expectations. And this is the one that allows me to accept that and let go and fall asleep. So Joy is a wonderful, wonderful companion, a sleep companion, a wonderful sleep companion. Plus this um, collector's bottle uh, with the black gold and red hues it's it's like the pure vision of nighttime and in fact once i smelled joy from the black bottle i the bottle helped me realize how dark this perfume truly is it's dark as the night you know i've had joy in its glass bottle and its crystal bottles and with the yellow diamondy concoction on the stopper and it's all about light and sun but once I smelled it out of a black bottle, I'm like, oh, hold on. This is a very precise depiction of darkness uh, rather than light, joy. So complicated as a... Com because the name joy calls out the opposite of darkness, doesn't it? And yet there's joy within darkness. There's joy within letting go and falling asleep. Uh, and and being able to recharge your batteries while sleeping. That brings me joy. This one is way more complex than, than I ever thought it was. And it's 
the more I get to know it and the more I uh, fall in love with it. Beautiful masterpiece of a perfume. The ninth fragrance, and we're almost at the end of this journey, uh, is um, the opposite of joy. This one is really sun and happiness and creamy, buttery, smooth time travel. And it delivers the best of every epoch uh, in a soft way as it lulls you off into dreamland. This thing is a masterpiece. I don't like the other concentrations as much. This one I adore in its extra concentration. It's another Chanel. It's Gabriel Parfum. Oh my God, I already bought backup bottles of this one. I know it's crazy because this thing is so expensive because it's so small and it just, you know, Chanel with their extras, uh, female uh, targeted to women extras, you know, for me, perfume knows no gender, but their Blue de Chanel Parfum does not cost as much as, you know, Gabriel Parfum in the same, uh, in the same size, right? Milliliter ratio price per milliliter ratio, but I'm all, you know, here, halfway through the bottle already. This thing to go to sleep with, it's something else. It's really, really a huge luxurious treat to fall asleep while wearing a Gabriel Parfum because it is just such a masterpiece of blending of ingredients, of beautiful ingredients, beautiful white florals that are just like the top of the crop <laughs> is in here. And it just smells so good in quality that it, you're like, okay, I'm at peace. It doesn't get any better than this, you know? It, it's, you're cradled by the most majestic white flowers. It's like being on a cloud, on a beautiful, soft white cloud, scented, by the gods it's that supreme and you just let go because you're like okay it can't get i can't hunt for anything better than this This is it we've arrived to the top we can just let go that's how beautiful this is to fall asleep to and uh, boy do i love falling asleep to gabriel and you know we tend to forget I'm seeing in the chat, so I really need to splurge on a nighttime perfume, says Sinison. I, we re so beautiful, says uh, Tisha. Uh, we really tend to forget, and this is one of the reasons I also wanted to make this video, we tend to forget that perfumes are there for us, not for others. You know, we are often led to believe that we're wearing perfumes in order to seduce we're wearing perfumes for others. Oh, I want to wear perfume that I'm going to get compliments on. Uh, that's not me. I really couldn't care less for that. I mean, it's the pheromones that work. Your own pheromones are what attracts another person to you. If, if adding another smell, touch of perfume, it's sure, it's nice. It can be pleasant. But really, what really attracts a person to you and makes them stay with you is your own hormonal smell. Everything else you add to the mix is for yourself, for your own personal pleasure. And we underestimate the importance of sleep. We underestimate the importance of the comfort of being in bed and spending money on perfumes for yourself to also, you know, wear to bed while you're going to sleep is, I think, the ultimate luxury because it's such a special, special intimate moment of yourself with yourself, like you're deciding what fragrance to wear in that delicate moment when you are about to lose consciousness. So you're giving so much trust to a perfume because you're letting it guide you or, or be your companion into dreamland. It's a huge honor to bestow upon a fragrance as well. And also a huge honor to bestow upon a perfume maker by, you know, letting them know like, hey, like I bestow so much respect and, and trust in your fragrance and in your savoir-faire that I'm actually wearing it to go to sleep. I think that's the ultimate compliment you could give a perfume. It's the ultimate compliment you can give a perfume is to say, I would wear this to sleep. Yeah. 
and my tenth one, <laughs> you would never guess. I, uh, yeah, CK, it's a treat after a huge day, right? Where do I apply perfume before I go to bed? Asks N. Um, usually on my chest or here or here or chest here and here. <laughs> I mean, on both sides, you know, I overdo it. If it's a very strong perfume, like for example, with Sycamore, just one spray here on my chest and one here or just on the chest because this one is particularly potent. You don't need to overdo it. Actually, if you overdo it with Sycamore, then you won't smell it as much. There's this kind of weird way of, if you overdose Sycamore, it kind of disappears. Very fascinating perfume. But, mm, my 10th bottle or my 10th perfume is, I and I kept it as last because I feel it's the most soothing of all of them. This is the one that you really, I don't want to say aromatherapy, but this is the one that connects you really very much. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued as well, but alas, it connects you to your kind of like ancestors. It's, it's, it's a smell that, that smells of archaic, um, I don't know, rituals, maybe our archaic type of, uh, health of, uh, health, maybe not, but more like, um, plant-based smell that brings back memories, that helps you heal, that soothes you. Uh, and it's a memory. Hint, hint. Or memory of a smell. Or Memoire d'une odeur. Believe it or not, Gucci's uh, Memoire d'une odeur, uh, made by Coty. Uh, is my 10th perfume to wear to bed. And it's just amazing. The chamomile, this ancient Roman chamomile that is the base of Memoire d'une odeur is just beyond. Um, I did not like this perfume in the beginning. Now I really love it a lot, but I understood when to use it and when it works for me the best. Um, to spray this on, it's not long lasting. Longevity is not beastly. Projection is not beastly. None of, no, 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 nothing about this perfume is like groundbreaking, but there's that bitter element of the chamomile, um, in here that it just calms you. It calms you. It's an earthy green, yellow green smell of memory. It's almost like a tea <laughs> with roots. It's earthy. It's soothing. It's very ancestral. Uh, it, it feels like something that is hundreds and hundreds of years old that, that will allow you. It, feel, it smells like something that knows a lot, that there's wisdom in. And it it feels like it can pass on that wisdom to you as you kind of drift away into dreamland. In fact, wearing this at night makes much more sense. Wearing this to bed makes much more sense than wearing it out and about during the day. It's almost wasted wearing it out and about during the day. I think this one has more effect on you if you're smelling it while you're dreaming than wearing it while you're awake and conscious. I think this one has much more effect uh, in a positive way on me when I'm unconscious, when I'm sleeping. Mm. Gorgeous. Gucci's Memoir d'une odeur. Discontinued. <laughs> oh, the baby's gone. It is what it is, you guys. These perfumes, they just come and go. These were my top 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep. Perfumes that I would wear, that I do wear. <laughs> When I go to sleep, uh, let me know your top 10 in the comment section down below. Let me get quickly to the chats. Wow, that one I never considered, says Trina. Um, 
Oh, we're talking about discontinuation. Yeah, they got rid of it so quick. I know, Jesus. It, I guess it wasn't selling as well. Uh, Debbie says, oh, no, it's still available in some places online. Um, CK says, Grandma, place. It's like when you go to an old library, the smell of old books are the best. There's a beauty to the smell of old books. Yeah, like papers that are slowly self-auto-combusting. Oh, amazing smell. Amazing smell. Rachel says, I wear 31 Rue Cambon or Coach Sunset Dreams. Oh, 31 Rue Cambon is also a beauty to go to sleep uh, with. It's also a very soothing, relaxing one. You just got to know how to dose that one right because if you overdo it, it can turn acidy and then it kind of wakes me up again. I have to spray it from a distance. Just a little bit goes a long way if you're going to go to sleep with 31 Rue Cambon. Thank you guys so much for the comments. Let me know your thoughts or for the chats, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Dreamy, sleepy love. Subscribe.